So let's go ahead and give the character an actual weapon and we'll give the character a minigun from the FPS weapons asset. I'm going to drag the minigun in and you'll notice that the arms are connected to the minigun and that's perfectly fine. UFPS can work with the arms connected or the arms not connected. In the case of the arms not being connected, you could have multiple weapons under a single arm model. But we'll have the arms connected since that's what we're given. And the first thing that we want to do is go to the item type manager so that we can create the minigun item type. An item type is basically just a scriptable object representation of the item. And it's mostly used within the scene so that you can easily reference, hey, I want to drop this item or pick up this item, for example. So we're going to add the minigun and then we're also going to add the minigun bullet and the minigun bullet will be fired by the minigun. Now that we've created that, we can go ahead and create our actual item. And the item that we're creating is the minigun. And it will have an item type of minigun, which was what we just created. And we will assign it to the Soldier 1 character. If we left that field blank, it would create a prefab and then you could pick up the item at runtime, which is pretty neat. The next option is whether or not we want to add it to the default loadout, and we do, so that the character will spawn with the minigun. This next field asks the animator ID, and this is just a unique ID within the animator, just so that the animator knows, hey, I have a minigun, for example. And we already set up the animator to be able to work with the minigun, and so we use this unique ID of 201 for it. First person base asks for the arms for the object, and in this case, it's the arms and the minigun, but we will go ahead and drag that into it. And then we will, it asked for the animator of the minigun. And this was the animator that we had created ahead of time. We basically just copied the one that's already in there or in the demo, UFPS demo scene. The only other thing that we need to edit is this consumable item type. And this specifies which item type the minigun should use when it's firing his weapon. And we are going to use the bullet that we created. So now when we hit build item, we should see that the minigun goes from here to here underneath the character. And then if I double click on the actual model file, we'll see that, hey, he actually does have it. So let's get that out of the way. And now let's hit play, see if we got it to anything. Cool. We have a minigun. It's positioned a little bit too high. So let's go ahead and adjust the positioning. And I can adjust the position within the UFPS spring system. UFPS uses springs pretty much all over in order to give a smooth, fluid, procedural animation for this. So I'm going to adjust the offset of the position of the minigun. So this will adjust the spring position so that it's resting position is at this offset. So now when I hit play, it should be positioned correctly. And that looks a whole lot better. And let's, let's see what happens when I fire it. So looks like it's firing, but I've, I've left go of the mouse and it, it's still trying to fire. So that part doesn't work well. And the reason for that is because UFPS can either use animation events or it can use a just a regular event timer and right now it's waiting for an animation event that it doesn't actually have in order to be used. So we're going to just not use that animation event. And now when I, now when I hit play and then I start firing and I lift up, it should stop firing. Oh yeah, it looks like we even got a little bit of kickback. So it did actually fire, but it only fired once. And the reason for that is because we are doing semi-auto versus full auto. So now it should keep firing and let's have it fire at a faster rate. So now we should get a whole bunch of kickback. Yeah, so now, now, now we're good. We're not actually really seeing any visual impacts though. And the reason why is that, or that is, is because we first should set up a muzzle flash so that we can see visually that, hey, it's firing and we'll put the muzzle flash towards the end of the barrel.
So this looks like a, a pretty good position. And then the fire point is where the actual ray cast is fired or the projectile is spawned. So we'll adjust that as well. And that can have the same position as the muzzle flash. And then the shell eject point is where the shell casing gets eject. So we'll put this around here. All right, that's good. So now we need to give the minigun an actual muzzle flash. And in order to do that, we will use an existing muzzle flash that's included with UFPS. So let's go ahead and search for muzzle flash. And I like the assault rifle muzzle flash. So we'll use that. And then let's go ahead and do a shell, except the shells that we want to use, let's use one from the FPS weapons asset. I think it's PDR shell. Um, let me go ahead and make a duplicate of that so I know which one it is and I'll move it to that folder. And then I'll remove some of the FPS weapons components. So none of that is UFPS. So we'll go ahead and remove it. And then we'll go back to our editor script window and then we'll, this time we'll click on object because it will allow us to easily create new objects and we want to create a shell that is of object type shell and then we'll drag in the model and then it will ask where do we want to save it we'll save it and sure we'll save it in that directory and now we have a shell that will work with UFPS so that's perfect and let's go ahead and now assign that shell to minigun and then it's under the shootable weapon component and I gotta keep scrolling, keep scrolling. There it is. So we'll search for, actually there could be a lot of shells, so I'm just going to, I'm just gonna drag it in. There we go. All right, so now, now that we have the shell, let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. We should get a muzzle flash and some shells ejecting. And it looks like we do have both, the shells are Kind of hard to see, but we also got this warning saying that the man maximum number of colliders have been hit. And the reason for that is because a non-alloc ray cast or overlap cast is used and we need to basically bump up the number of elements in that array. So let's go ahead and find this, where this field is set and we'll just multiply that by 10. So now, now we'll have plenty and we won't get that warning anymore. But we, we got a muzzle flash, so that's good. And we're actually doing well now. So that, that's looking pretty good.